success if you don't have a goal? What is the goal? What are your goals as a child of God, as a father, as a mother? This year, we are about to finish this year. We are about to end this year. How will you say that you succeeded during 2022 if you did not set from the beginning of the year certain goals, goals to reach? Of our life, Lord. Be according to our need. Hey, hallelujah. You say that you are I am the living water that takes the form of the need of your people. Lord, take the form of the need of your people this morning and sort out their issue. Heal us, O Lord. Deliver us. Guide us. Shine upon our lives this morning. You haven't changed. The Bible says you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Lord, show us your glory this morning. Show us that glory. The way you did to our father Moshe, you showed him your glory. The Bible says, after the dedication of the temple of Solomon, the glory of God came upon that temple. And no man, no priest could enter because your glory came down. Lord, let your glory come down this morning. So that no man, so that no humanity may come and do whatever in our life. So that no demonic power may have access in our life, O oh Lord. Speak to us, O oh Lord. Hey, I feel such this anointing of worship. Do you know that when you are worshiping God, you are entering into intimacy with God and you are receiving from Him. When you are worshiping God, the Lord is sorting out your issue. The Lord is casting out demons and is helping you. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you for the healing. master of everything everything that you we need Lord you are the master you are the master of what we see and you are the master of what we don't see you are the master of what we have and you are the master of what you don't have yet you are the master of what you are looking for you are the master of healing you are the master of marriage you are the master of the fruit of the womb you are the master of everything oh Lord and you are on our side. So we believe everything we need, we have it this morning. Come, Lord, speak to us. Bless us. 
and do us good through this word. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and we say, Amen. Can somebody give Jesus a round of applause? Thank you. God bless you. You may have a seat. Do you mind greeting the brother and the sister next to you and tell him and tell her that uh, he is welcome in the presence of God. Thank you for coming this morning. God bless you. We are in the book of James, chapter 2, verse 17 to 26. James, chapter 2, verse 17 to 26. And we will also read 3 John, verse 2. And that one I will request to read in the version Amplified. Amplified, 3 John, or 3 John, chapter 1. 3 John have only one chapter, and we're going to read verse 2. And then we'll finish in the book of Galatians, chapter 6, verse 4 to 5. And uh, this one I will request us to read, if we can, in the version, the Passion Translation. The Passion Translation. Because there are certain words that I want us to retrieve, and they are on those versions. So let go. The first one, James, chapter 2, verse 17 to 26. Long reading. But we'll do our best to make it as quick as possible. James, chapter 2. By the way, for those who don't know Brother James or Apostle James, Apostle James was a little brother of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. His real little brother. He was the son of his mother and his father. <laughs> you can imagine. So this gentleman is so Jesus. They grew together in the same. They grew together in the same house. John, I mean James, <clears throat> chapter two, verse seventeen. It is written as follow: In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, "You have faith. I have deeds. Show me your faith without deed." And I will show you my faith by my deeds. You believe that there is one God. Good. Even demons believe that. And shudder. You, you foolish person. Do you want evidence that faith without deed is useless? Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar you see that his faith and his action were working together and his faith was made complete by what he did i want you to take note of that that faith was made complete by action and the scripture was fulfilled that says abraham believed god and it was credited to him as righteousness. And he was called God's friend. You see that a person is considered righteous by what they do and not by faith alone. In the same way, was not even Rahab, the prostitute, considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in a different direction. As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deed is dead. Faith without action is dead. Amen. Amen. Third John, can you please put that for me in the version amplified? Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in every way. You know, in other version they say, you may be successful in every way, may keep well, even as your soul keeps well and prosper. Prosper or success or succeed. Galatians chapter 6 Verse 4 to 5. I know you, they don't have the Passion Translation. Is there anybody who has 
in the assembly, the Passion Translation, you can just read for me the Passion Translation, please. Read for me. Yes. Galatians chapter 6, verse 4 to 5. To fulfill the work God has given. Okay? To do with excellence. To do with excellence. And their joy will be in doing what's right and being themselves. Uh-huh. And not in being affirmed by others. Uh-huh. And not comparing themselves with others. Amen. Amen. Are you through? Thank you. Amen. Beloved, this morning, I want to share with you, as I put in our um, WhatsApp group groups, that this morning we are going to learn about the key to success. Who would like to success in life here? We would all like to succeed. You want to succeed. You want to be a successful man. You want to be a successful woman. You want to be a successful businessman, businesswoman, a successful father, a successful mother, a successful pastor, a successful whoever you are. All of us want to succeed. Hallelujah. We don't want our dream to remain dreams. We don't want our dreams to remain in the dream. Because there are people who have so big dreams, but unfortunately their dreams are still in the dream. So my aim this morning is to retrieve your dreams from your dream and to bring them to reality, to become success. Hallelujah. And success never been an accident. I want you to take note of that. Success never been an accident. You won't succeed by accident. Success is always and always ever been a result of something. A result of an effort. A result of something that was done. Unfortunately, many of us, we are expecting success, but we do nothing in order for us to succeed. Being a Christian does not make, make you automatically successful. You must take note of that. Being a Christian does not make you automatically successful. Otherwise, you could have always have millionaire. You become Christian and you become millionaire. Or you become, you know, you get it all. But we are people are struggling. They are Christian, but they're still struggling. They are not successful. You can look at their life and see that this guy doesn't succeed. He doesn't reach the point that he's supposed to be. After five years, we come and we find you at the same place where we left you. There is a problem. Because Christians, they are thinking that uh, being a Christian will make me successful. No. There are things that you need to do even though you are a Christian. Now listen to this. And we must take note of this. To have the person of Christ is very different from to have the principles of Christ. Hmm. To have the person of Christ in you, it is completely different, different from to have the principles of Christ. Let me explain myself. To have the person of Christ is to receive Christ as a personal Lord and Savior and to have the life and to be assured of eternal salvation and to be assured to enter heaven. I can assure you, brothers and sisters, there are people who are going to enter heaven although they didn't succeed in this life. Although they failed in this life. Although they struggle in this life, but yet they'll enter heaven. But let me tell you, this is not and will never be the will of God for you to enter heaven while you did not succeed in earth. God wants you to be successful in earth and also to enter heaven. That's why when Peter asked him, we left everything. We have followed you. What's going to come with us? Jesus said, yeah, you left everything and you followed me. Nobody who has left everything for me will lack to get hundredfold times in this earth. Jesus said, in this earth. Jesus said, in this earth. 
I don't believe in this gospel of poor. In this gospel that says that if you are a Christian, you must be poor, you must be lacking everything, you must be asking everything. No. It is time for you to understand that Jesus never said and Jesus never been a poor. Many people here think that Jesus was a poor. Jesus had never been a poor. He became poor to make you rich, but he never been poor. And even though, if Jesus was a poor man, do you think that he could have need a treasurer for, to keep his money? A poor guy keeps his money in his pocket. He doesn't even keep it in the bank because it's too little for him to go and put it in the bank. He'll be thinking about the charges and all those things so he doesn't need to put the money in the bank. But Jesus never been a poor. He needed a treasurer to keep his money. When Jesus died, his garment, it was so expensive that uh, people had to play dice for them to decide who's going to get that garment. Do you think that if he was a poor man and wearing a, 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 a cheap cloth, those soldiers they could have fight for that? He was not a poor man. Jesus had very rich people. He had connections. He told his disciple, go, go in the city. You will find a man who is carrying a basket on his head. Follow that man. He will show you a room well prepared. That guy was very much connected. He was not a poor man. He was a rich man. Hallelujah. Amen. So stop thinking that if you become a Christian, you must be poor. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. There must be millionaire among us in the name of Jesus. There must be millionaire among us in the name of Jesus. People who can influence the economy. People who can influence the economy of this country. Why not the economy of the world? Do you know the family called Rockefeller family? Apparently, Rockefeller family... They are the ones who are influencing the economy of the entire world. Yet they are pagan. Have you never heard about that story? Read. So you as a child of God, you have the ability. Because the Bible said that gold and silver belong to your God. And the God that belongs to all those things belongs to you. So I pray for you to become rich. I pray for you to start not crying for the 500 ren. I pray for you to start speaking about 6-0 and after 1. You must speak about the six. You must speak about million. Amen. You know, I feel nowadays when I speak about million, I'm not afraid of million anymore. Amen. Watch the space. Yeah. It is coming. Okay. I'm not afraid of million anymore. When I speak about one million, before I was when it's one million, I'm afraid. Now, when you speak about million, I'm no longer afraid. Yeah. Million is only seventy thousand yeah. dollars. Come on, yeah. <laughs> one million rand is nothing. You can get that. I declare it over your life in the name of Jesus. I declare it over your life in the name of Jesus. Those people who become millionaires, they don't have five eyes. They don't have three legs. They're having two eyes like you. They're having one head like you. They just learn the secret to become successful in life. That's what we're going to learn here. Now, I was speaking about the person of Christ. The person of Christ is the life that we receive from Christ. But... There are also principles of Christ. Many Christians, we have the life of Christ, the person of Christ, but we do not have the principles of Christ. It's like the people of Israel. They knew the glory of God. They saw God. Then they, they saw the hand of God, but they didn't know the ways of God. <laughs> Beloved, it is time for you as a Christian to learn Jesus' principles. Listen, Jesus' principles are eternal, Amen. are universal. Everybody who applies Jesus' principle becomes successful. Amen. The principle of Jesus are eternal. Even the pagan, when they apply those principles, they become successful. Pagan knows that give, it shall be given back to you. A good measure, a full measure, a second measure, and the overflow. They know that even if you're not, you not a Christian, if you give, you are entering into the principle of Christ. Amen. Are you getting me? Amen. The principle of working. Pagan knows that if you work harder, you shall receive results. Yeah. But many Christians, they don't know that. They only have faith. I believe. Hallelujah. I believe. I believe. Believing alone is not going to make you rich. Yeah. Believing alone is not going to make you successful. Yeah. That's what James was talking to the people of his time. 
So you need to have the life of Christ, but you need also to have the principles of Christ. You must learn the principles of Christ. The principles of Christ are universal. And many pagans are successful. They don't have the life of Christ, but they only have the principles of Christ. And they are succeeding. Because for you to succeed in this earth, it is not only about the life of Christ, it is also about the principles of Christ. It is time for you to learn the principle of Christ and start applying them. You will never be successful in this earth if you don't apply the principles. Hallelujah. Amen. Very important. And you must get it. Having faith alone is not going to make you successful. Many people think that if I have faith, it is enough. Many people, have, many people think that if I say I believe, I receive. He goes to church and the man of God declares, receive, and then he, he screams, I receive. That's only one leg of what needs to be done. There is another leg. You need to work. You need to do certain principles. You need to learn the principles. Apostle James, he is telling them that many of you, you are not getting things because you have faith without work. You have faith without principles. We have faith without action. James chapter 2 verse 14 and verse 17. Let's read it. James chapter 2 verse 14. Beloved, this morning my aim is to make you a successful person. A successful Christian. By teaching you the principles of success. So that you may apply them and may succeed in life. The Bible says, what good is it, my brother and sisters, in someone claim to have faith but has no deed, have no action? Can such faith save them? Can such faith make you successful? You are not succeeding because you only have faith. You are screaming, making noise, saying that you have faith, but you are doing nothing. Faith must always be a company with something. Can you please tell your neighbor, faith must be a company with something. Something. So when I say, I tell you to say that is so that you can wake up your friend who's next to you is about to sleep. <laughs> and I give you the responsibility to wake up the friend next to you if he's about to sleep. You know the body. If it was a movie of Jackie Chan here, cha, 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 nobody will sleep. We'll be following all the movie. But since it's the word of God, the body is fighting us. Because we know the body is not part of us. The Bible said that flesh and blood will never inherit the kingdom of God. Therefore, it will always fight you. You are not your body, you are a spirit which lives in the body. That the body is not your friend. Hallelujah. Tell your body, my body, you must listen to the word. Remember, the body have the five senses. Your spirit, you're not going to catch if your body doesn't get it. So you need to use the, the five senses. And those senses are in your body and goes to your soul. And the soul will transmit to your spirit. So if you don't control your body, your spirit will miss what you're supposed to receive this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. So the Bible says that faith without action, it is dead. Don't think because you have faith, things are going to happen automatically. Don't think that because you believe that you become rich automatically. Don't think because you are, you are having faith in God that everything will be a rose for you. <laughs> I believe you have seen it already. Despite your faith, you are fighting. Despite your faith, you are having problems. Despite your faith, you are failing. You have faith on something, but it didn't happen. You fell. You know why you fell? Because you didn't do certain things. You didn't discover certain principles. And that's what you're going to discover. So, faith alone cannot do things. It needs action. And those actions are the keys. I am not speaking about one key. I'm speaking about keys. And I don't have any pretension to tell you that what I'm going to tell you today are the only one keys that exist. There are many other keys to success. But we are going to share nine keys for success. And I'm going to do my best to deliver them all this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. What is first success? Because we need to understand for what is success. How can you say that you are successful? What or how will you say that that person is successful or have succeeded? 
Success is the accomplishment of a aim or a purpose. Success is what? Is a accomplishment of an aim or a purpose. So a person cannot become successful if that person does not have aims. If he does not have purpose. So, and that one will see even that the first key to success it will be goals. <laughs> Hallelujah. So a success is uh, that accomplishment of an aim or of a purpose. So for you to succeed, you must first have aims and goal and purpose. A success is a good outcome, a positive outcome of an undertaking. So you are successful when you reach what you targeted that you should reach. Am I making sense to somebody? You are successful when you reach a target that has been put by yourself or a target that has been imposed by the society. So we are successful in marriage, for instance, if we live peaceful life in our, in our marriage, we have children, we grow up our children very well, we send them to school, and then they finish their school, they are good people in the society. Those are the, the, the aim or the target that the society has put to see or to say that that person has succeeded. If you go to school, we'll say that you are successful if you fulfill all the requirements to go to the next level. They say, for instance, for you to pass to the next level, you must have 60%. So we'll say that you are successful if you manage to get there 60%. If you are 59 you are not successful. Are you getting that? Yes. You have done things, but you are still not successful because you did not reach the aim and the goals. Am I making sense to somebody? So what you are doing, you are not yet successful if you haven't reached the aim, the goal, or the standard that have been set by you or by the society. The standard that have been set by you or by God. There are standards that God has set in your life for you to say that you are a successful Christian. For you to say that you are a successful father, that you are a successful woman. The Bible says, one of the standards for woman, for married woman, the Bible says, a wise woman does what? Build her own house. So if you are a woman, and you're having gold chains and having big cars and having loaded account that your children are completely disrupted according to God's standard. You are not successful. So you understand now the concept success, it is not usually what we think that it is. The concept success, it is always to be compared or to be put in front of, of a M or a goal. The standard that has been set for you to reach. So everywhere they speak about success, there must always be a standard that is set that you need to reach. Hallelujah. And as I say now, let learn the keys to succeed. For you to succeed, the first key is to have clear goal. Or clear goals. You can't speak about success if you don't have a goal. What is the goal? What are your goals as a child of God? As a father? As a mother? This year, we are about to finish this year. We are about to end this year. How will you say that you succeeded during 2022 if you did not set from the beginning of the year certain goals, goals to reach? You can't tell me that you have succeeded. I will ask you, you have succeeded compared to what? What makes you say that I'm we are successful? No, I bought two cars. But what if the aim was you to buy three cars this year and you only managed to buy two? Are you successful? 
What if your aim this year was to eat to reach one million in dollars? Because I don't want to reach million in, in rent anymore. It's too little. <laughs> Couple of days ago, my wife was asking me, what is one million in rent? Because I just realized that she was tired of one million in rent. He said, what is one dollars in one million dollars in rent? Say, why well, you reach the point now? When you start asking what, what is one million in rent, I told her it's 10 million. Roughly 10 million. See, one, one million dollars. 10 million. Pardon? 17 million. Jehovah. I declare you must become millionaire in uh, dollars. Yeah. One million fella. Yeah. 17 million. Yeah. Aibo, I declare over your life. Yeah. You must become millionaire in dollars. Yeah. Those who are millionaire in dollars, there are people who are here in South Africa, they are millionaire in dollars. Yeah. The issue is they have understood the secrets and the keys. There are people who are in front of doors. They are forcing doors. Stop forcing that door. Police will come to arrest you, think that it's not your own house. They'll ask you, why are you taking so long to open that door? If that is your door, why are your keys not opening? Maybe you are an imposter. You'll call demons upon your life. We are trying to open a door. You are using a wrong key. Let's use the right keys. It will open for us doors of opportunities, doors of life. The first one, set goals in your life. Amen. You must have clear goals. Not only goals, but clear goals. You know, when I was thinking about this, I told myself, I think what you should do, start by setting up realistic goals. Goals that you can achieve. Start by small one. Because when you achieve goals, it will give you the sensation of satisfaction and will boost you to do more. Yeah. Don't start by goals that are too much. This year, I'm setting up that I will buy five buildings. Yeah, you can do that. But it might take you what you cannot be able to achieve. So it's best for you to start by goals that you can achieve. And goals must be set in all the area of your life. In your financial life, what is the goal for this year? In your marital life, what are the goals? In your spiritual life, what are the goals? Set up the goals. Do you have goals in your life? Even you say, no, me, I'm still a child. You're not a child. Even a child must have goals. This year, I'll have 80% of whatever I must make 80%. It is a goal. You can set up a goal. This year, I am not going to distract myself from TV. I will be always after school doing this and that. Those are goals. As a father, as a husband, as a wife, you must have goals. In Matthew chapter 20, verse 28, the Lord Jesus knew perfectly what was the goal of his life. When he came, he did not come here just going left and right looking for what I can do. You know, he knew that here I came for a goal. Matthew chapter 20 verse 28. The Bible says, just as the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So Jesus, the son of the living God, bless his name. He came and he knew his Purpose. He has a goal. That's why when Peter later on came to him and was trying to convince him to not go and die in Jerusalem, he told him, Peter, I know my goals. If you know your goals, you will be able to choose your friend. If you know your goals, you will be able to know your direction. Because you know where my things are. If you know that you're going to the department of home affairs, the bigger one, you know that it is in Pretoria. So you're not going to follow people who are going to Mafigay because it's going to opposite direction. The problem because you don't know your goal. You always have wrong friends. You always go to wrong direction because you don't have goals. Hallelujah. Amen. Have goals. How many children you want to have? And when they're enough, stop. Don't have children and then say, this one, my auntie will take care. That one, my uncle will take care. No. 
don't pull such goals. You must know what is, what are your goals. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And I say start with the small one. Because of time and because of the numbers, let me not go deep and extend myself. Maybe God will give us a, an opportunity to talk about this. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, do you have goals? Amen. You are here. What, what are your goals? You are living in South Africa. What are your goals? You are here in Rassenberg. What, what are your goals? You are, no, this is time for us to stop having satans. Satan, Lucifer, they ask him, where are you from? I was just roaming around in the earth. Go left, go right. Go left, go right. No aim. If you just find somebody to kill, he kill. But have no aims. Don't be like that. You are a child of the living God. Have goals. Know what you are looking in life. Know where you are going. Know what are your, your targets in life. Because your success will depend on your targets. The second thing, the second key for success, it is hard work. Somebody say hard work. Hard work. And the word I am choosing, I'm choosing them carefully. I'm not saying work. I'm saying hard work. They are workers. They are hard workers. Many Christians, you are not succeeding because you're not a hard worker. You are a worker, but you're not a hard worker. The Bible speaks about diligence. The diligence. The diligent are the hard worker. There are people who just study. You just study 30 minutes. And then you go and write your paper. And then you think that you're going to make it. There is another one who takes three hours. He studied this paper. He went aside. He looked something. He is hardly working. If you want to succeed in life, you must learn to become diligent. To start working hard. Work hard. Christians of today, they are no longer diligent anymore. Why? Because they think that faith makes easy. Listen, faith does not make things easy. Faith only makes things possible. Amen. They don't make things easy. Even if you have faith, you still need to work hard. Because working hard is a key to success and to get more. Go and ask all those millionaires that you know. They are hard-working people. They wake up early in the morning. They have plans for the day. And they go hard in their work. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 12, verse 27. Proverbs 12, 27. God is against the ruggards, the lazy. Jesus never been a ruggard. He never been a lazy. Jesus was a hard-working man. He was waking up early in the morning, walking around by feet, doing the work. The Bible says, the lazy, the ragged, do not rust any game, but the diligent feed where? On the riches of the hand. The Bible says, the lazy, the ragged, do not rust his own game. Even to rust his game, even to cook his own game is a problem. There are Christians here. He has a work, but he's a lazy worker. How do you expect promotion if your boss sees that you are really a lazy man? You don't work hard. Listen, it is principle. If you work hard, you shall be noticed. Yes, the favor of God, but that favor, oh, do you know that the grace of God is a teacher? The Bible says the grace of God teaches us. The grace of God is a teacher. We don't want that gospel that makes people lazy. People think that, no, by grace, by grace. Yes, the grace of God shall teach you to be a hard worker. Amen. By that grace of God that teaches you to be a hard worker, people will notice your hard working and they shall promote you. How do you want God to promote a lazy man like you, a lazy woman like you, who's not going to do your job? When they're expecting you to deliver service, you're not delivering service, yet you're crying, God, promote me, promote me, give me that direction, give me the head of that department. Should God give the reaction of the department to a lazy man like you? Hello? Come on. Imagine if you are becoming 
what you want to become with a lazy life. You're not hardworking. What will happen to that company? That company will go down. Escom. It will go down. You will need to become diligent people. The Bible says the diligent feed on the riches of the hand. Do you understand now? Amen. That you must work hard. You are not working to be noticed by men. You are working by the principle. Because I know if I work hard, I'll be noticed. If I do more, I'll be noticed. You know, sometimes when we do KPI at work, people always, they are giving themselves high marks. Now, you ask them, are you sure that the high marks that you're giving yourself on this KPI are what you really deserve? Are you always there on time? Are you always leaving late? Are you always doing extra miles of what they're asking you? A Christian, you must always be diligent. Hello? Hey, am I hating you? Because the way you are so quiet now, I'm afraid. You were used to be taught. You are a child of God. The grace of God is upon you. Everything will go well. That is not the gospel of Jesus Christ. In, in, in John chapter 9, verse 4, John 9, 4, Jesus, the son of the living God, bless be his name. Jesus, the son of the living God, bless his name. He is saying himself that I should do the work. I should hard work. I should accomplish my task. I should work. As long as it is day, we must do the work of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. People like to rest. There is no rest for those who haven't worked. Let me say it again. There is no rest for those who haven't worked. That's why even your body, if you go to work with all your energy, you don't fall, you don't fall asleep easily. You see, when you've worked so hard during the day and you are tired, what happened? When you go, your body comes to sleep directly without any problem. But because you still go to sleep with your energy, Apostle Paul is telling Timothy, he's saying that I serve the libation. Libation is this offering of wine. He said that I've given everything. I have nothing left in me. No energy left in me. Whatever I had in me, I pour it out. There are many Christians who are going to bed with the energy of the day. The energy they were supposed to put in the, their work for their work to become a hard work to produce. The Bible said that the hard worker, he will eat the riches. You see what is making things to not work go well with you? Because you are not a hard worker. Hello? Hi. The Bible said that we must do the work. Do you do the work? You know, even the ladies in their house, there are ladies here, don't worry, I'm not going to say your name. You go to their house in the morning, a married woman, it's 12, she haven't bathed yet. You look at the house, it's still ups and down. But it's 12 o'clock. Now you're asking yourself, this woman, when she walked up in the morning, what is she doing? Lazy. Nails, long. I'm not having any problem with that. But do not make your nails long if your house is dirty. Because what will happen? Dirtiness will go under your nails. And then you will give us sickness. You see certain things. Demon have nothing to do. The dirtiness of your nails went into the food you give us. That area. I pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus. You must become a diligent woman. The Bible said in the book of... Uh, or the book of, uh, book of uh, Proverbs, that a wise woman, she wakes up early in the morning and she gives orders to all her servants early in the morning. I come to your house, knock at 11 o'clock, you are still dirty. You haven't done anything. Which hard woman are you? you? Even if you're a young woman, I come with that brother because I wanted that brother to see you because we never know. Now we arrive there at 11, you are not yet ready. Diligent. Somebody said diligent. Diligent. I, diligent woman. Wakes up early in the morning. You are clean. Your room is nice. Diligent. Work hard. 
Let at work people notice, no, this guy is a hard worker. Have you never seen people at your workplace that say, no, that guy is a hard worker? Are there people saying so about you? People say, I lazy, this guy, lazy. You know, there are people I know, everyone says, when you just go, say, hey, that guy is lazy. You know, it's, it's even disturbing you by his laziness. Because you don't want to partner with that person because he's lazy. Because of time. God will not gonna come from heaven to do what you can do. Oh. God will not gonna come from heaven to do what you can do. God will only come to do what you cannot do. That's what the Bible said. We must do what the work of him will send us. He knows you. He knows your ability. So he has given you things to do. If you don't do them, they will not gonna be done. You may have big faith. Not gonna be done. Faith without action, it is dead. Don't lie or don't go beyond faith and lie on faith and say, no, I have faith, I have faith, I have faith. You'll be saying you have faith until the end, nothing will happen. So the, the second thing, you must be diligent. The third thing for you to succeed, the, the third key is constancy. You must be constant in what you are doing. You see, most of the time we are failing because we are not constant on what we are doing. January and February, you are a hard-working man, a prayerful man, a prayerful woman. Comes March, you start running away from church, you start going down, you are not constant. constant. You pass April, no longer constant. Comes June because cold is coming, you come back to prayer. And then you go down again. They are Christian are not constant. Be constant. Constancy is an ingredient which is lacking in many Christians' life. They always go ups and down, ups and down, ups and down. It is time for you to be constant on what you are doing. Constantly praying. Constantly working hard. Constantly having your eyes focused on your goal. Constantly, you must be constant. Don't lose your constancy, then you lose your focus. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. You can't make it, you can't become successful if every time you are about to do it, you're about to make it. You relax. You're about to make it. You relax. You're about to make it. You relax. There are people who are always giving up. When he's about to make it, he gives up. Life cannot be like that, my brother. You need to keep a certain constant of you in your life. Hallelujah. Amen. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, do what? Stand firm. Be constant. Stand firm. You only study because Papa was behind you. When Papa is no longer there, you go down. No, you must be constant. Keep the same speed. Increase, but don't decrease. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself how? Fully to the work of the Lord. Now, people think that the work of the Lord is only what we do at church. The work of the Lord is everything that you do for others. Amen. Where you go to work, that you get salary, it is also a work of the Lord. You think that you're working for God only when you are at church. Even at your working place, you're working for the Lord. That's why do not be lazy at work because you're working also for God. Hallelujah. Because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. So be constant, my brother. Do not lose your focus. Wake up in the morning, go. Wake up, go, go. There are people, their life is only stories. They only tell you, tell you about the past. They only tell you, me, I used to wake up every day, five o'clock, every day, five o'clock. What happened to that waking up? Me, I used to go to work, you know, the first, what happened to that habit? 
You got discouraged because somebody says something or somebody did something of the first time they did not get you that thing and you get discouraged. The Bible said, do not be discouraged. Continue to be constant. The fourth thing or the fourth key, <laughs> the fourth key for success to open the door for you to succeed, it is called discipline. Somebody said discipline. You will never achieve anything if you are not disciplined. You can't do everything every time and go everywhere anytime. You must have discipline of your life. Be disciplined, you are a married woman. You are no longer what you have been before. Be disciplined, you are a married husband. Be disciplined, you are a child of God. Be disciplined because you have your focus. You have your goals. If you are disciplined, you will not going to hang around with anybody. You will hang around with proper people because you know where I am going. Discipline will lead you to learn to say no. If you are not disciplined, you say yes to everybody. If somebody suggests you to do things which are not taking you to your goal, those things may be good, what he's telling you, but you must tell him, it is good, yes, but it is not good for my goals. Hello? Many of us were doing things because people told us to do them. But are those things good for you? You know, it's good. You know me, I'm drinking cold water. I'm drinking cold water. And you, hey, I was drinking cold. Is it good for you? Is it going to help you to, to, to reach your aim, your goals? Because your goals are not mine. That's that why your success is not going to be necessary success for me. Because you have different goals. Hello? Amen. Your success is going to be not necessarily mine. Because you have different goals. So since we have different goals, I must have discipline to not listen to everybody, to not take anything. You must learn to say no. You must say no, say, learn to say no, I am fine. Don't eat everything they give you. Maybe your aim is to lose weight. Now you are eating everything they give you. Learn to say no, my brother. This one I don't eat. I don't drink cold drink anymore. I'm not saying that it is bad to drink cold drink. It is serving to you to reach. If you want to become obese, it is your aim. It will be successful. Go on with the, 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 your cold drink or whatever, coke and whatever, it's fine. But when I don't drink, don't also drink because I don't drink. Hello? Amen. Have you seen how many things that you have copied just by the pleasure of copying and you did not achieve them? Because they were not saving your aim. What is your aim? If you set up your goal, you must be disciplined. You must know that uh, as I have my own game, I cannot just do anything. Read with me. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. And please let read, let read it on the version amplified. It is time for us to start to become very disciplined. Mm, discipline is important. I don't just do things because you are doing them. Don't go learn things and come apply them at home. They don't serve your purpose. Copy things and do things that are serving your purpose. And it is important to say no. It is important to say that I am not going to do that. Because it's not taking me to my purpose. Brother, let go and do this. Tell him, I love you so much. But that place, you're not going to serve my purpose. The Bible says, but refuse and avoid irreverent legend, profane and impure, God in a fiction, Mary grandmother. <laughs> oh my goodness. Did you hear that? Mary grandmother stares. <laughs> you know, when the grandmother is telling you things which are having nonsense. And silly myth and express your disa disapproval on them. The Bible says, Train yourself. In the word training, there is also the word discipline. A good training or a good trainer or the person who's training himself, he must have discipline for the training to work. So as a child of God, if you want to succeed, you must be disciplined. 
Be disciplined. Don't go to the mall and start buying things that you did not plan to buy. You just suddenly remember that you don't have that pot and it's a time for to buy that pot. You suddenly remember, oh, these shoes with my other cloth will go well and then you buy. And then, do not be like that. Be disciplined. Be able to resist the temptation. Be able to do window shop without entering the window of the shop. Hello? Am I making sense to somebody? Sometimes we become becoming poor because we do not have discipline. We do not pay the school fees because we do not have discipline. Then you're asking God, God, my children, they're chasing them from school. When God look at you, see that you lost that money out of discipline. Because we're not disciplined to know a disciplined man does what he plans to do. He doesn't do things out of pressure. Be disciplined. Resist the temptation. It's too hard, but I'm not going to give up because I know my plan. I know my goal. The, this year, my goal is to reach one million in dollars. I'm already in a 16 million rand. Oh, you mean one? Wow. One million dollars is 17 million rand. Imagine if when I'll get that one million dollars, imagine the bank will run after me because they will help me to invest. Hmm? Brother, they will ask you to invest. Bank will be calling you. Don't you want to invest here? Hallelujah. One million dollars is 17 million rent. No, that thing shocked me. Be disciplined. Hello? Be? Ask people who have achieved. They were disciplined. They were not just spending anyhow. They have discipline in spending. They were not just drinking anyhow or eating anyhow. The Bible said that those athletes, if you want to win what you need to do, you need to do discipline, to apply discipline in his life because he knows that uh, I want to reach a point. Hallelujah. The fifth thing, because of time, the fifth thing, the fifth key, willing to sacrifice. You must be ready to sacrifice. Hello? Amen. You must be ready to suffer now. Sacrifice is important for you to reach your objective, your goals. You must understand that it is dangerous to apply the credit card politic. Do you know the politic of the credit card? Use now. Spend now. Enjoy now. And pay later. It is time for you to turn it around. Pay now and enjoy forever. Are you getting me? Those who are having credit cards, it is time for you to fill up those credit cards and to give them back. Or maybe make sure if the bank's money is five rand, add three rand on top so that when you are spending, you are spending for yourself. Yeah. I'm telling you, credit card can make you, can depress you. You must ask me. It can depress you. You know when you have the credit card, you look in the credit card, hundred thousand dollars in the in your in your credit card. You go everywhere, swap, swap, swap. But the reality is. Those guys, when you are swapping like this, they are watching you. At the end of the month, payback time. Now the money that you are having, that you think that was enough, it is now the time of payback. Sometimes sacrifice yourself. So that today, I was supposed to eat bacon, eggs, and, uh, and what else? And ration, and whatever. But today, because I don't want to pay later, I'm going to eat only eggs and bread. I'll go away of bacon. I'll go away of ration. I'll go away of all those things because in two years I want to start eating those things without paying for them anymore. Do you know that it's possible? 
Those people are eating, they don't pay anymore. Do you know that there are people today who are no longer working for money, but money is working for them? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. You and me, we still go to work to wait for our salary. We are waiting for the end of the month. We are praying for the end of the month to come in the name of Jesus. Let the days come quick, 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 quick for me to reach the end of the month because I'm waiting for money. You are working for money. I declare over your life, time is coming when money must work for you. Amen. Where you will sit. You see those millionaires, they are sitting only seeing the curve of how money is going up. They are sitting in their rooms. You know, they wake up around those late hours and then they are checking. When you, you are laboring, you are looking for how oh, tomorrow again. They have people are working for them. When you, you are working for others. You will never become rich if you always work for others. It is time for you to make people work for you, for you to become a millionaire. Oh yeah? yeah? It is possible. Why are you looking at me if it's not possible? Don't you work for somebody? There are people who are working in the private company here. You are working for people there. Yeah. You are working for them. All they do, they watch you working for them. They make sure that you work well. <laughs> for them. They whip you a bit. They pressurize you a bit. Production, production. You are working for them. Production. It is time, it is possible for you, for people to work for you as well and you to see to say them production, production. You see, what you think that it is impossible will never happen in your life. But when you think that it is possible, your horizon will open up. Sacrifice yourself. Willing to sacrifice. Willing to wake up early in the morning. Willing to have pain now. Because I know after this pain, I will have joy. Hallelujah. Because of time. The sixth thing. <laughs> Beloved, it is tough what you are talking about. The sixth key. You must pursue continuous knowledge. You must do what? Pursue continuous knowledge. If you want to succeed, you must always learn. Listen, there are things that was bringing money. There are techniques that was making people rich 20 years ago. Those techniques are no longer working now. If you are still on those techniques, you're not going to work. It's not going to work. Do you know about cryptocurrency? Do you know that there's cryptocurrency? You, you always think about notes. Do you at least know what is cryptocurrency? Do you know how to do business with cryptocurrency? You are sitting there. You want to become rich. You want to succeed. But there are things that you don't know. You must learn the new thing. In your business, there are new things. Learn them. Hallelujah. Learn how to do trading. Do you know that there's trading? I didn't know. Trading. You sit, you just place your money and remove it, place there. Learn. It is not impossible. You can learn those things. You can do trading. Hello? It is possible, church. Pagan are doing that when you are sitting here, when you are here the whole night. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, they are busy doing that. They are passing you by. It is time for you. You are doing that, those trading in the name of Jesus. I'm doing this trading and the spirit of the Lord will guide you. Don't put money there. Put it there. Don't put money there. Put it there. Don't. They don't have God, but they have principles. They have nothing to do with God, but they know the principle of tradings. You must go learn. Go to school. You, you are starting a, a business. Go learn about that business. There are people who are failing in business because they did not go to learn. Learn the business, how business works. Because there are principles that sustain a business. If you don't know those principles, pagan without God will make it. Because he knew about the principle. Hallelujah. The pagan doesn't know God. He succeeded because he knew about the principle. He just applied a simple principle. Principles are there for pagan and for Christian. If you don't apply them, nothing will happen in your life. Go to school. Let me prove you that in the Bible. 
2 Peter chapter 1 verse 5. 2 Peter 1 5. Go to school to study. You want to have a saloon, learn how the saloon works. You want to have a, a garage, a, a washing, uh, how do you call them? Um, car wash. Learn how the car wash works. There are new techniques for car wash. Don't have a car wash where people are seeing. Wah, 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 wah. There are techniques. Go learn how to get the technique of the new car wash. Learn them. That guy is making more money than you. Because when you, you have five people that have to, to wash one car. Him have a machine. When you, you are, he's washing, you are washing 10 cars. Him, in that time you are watching 10 cars, he have watched 100 cars. Yeah. Of course, you're going to have more money than you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. For this reason, make what? Every effort. Yeah. To, what? To your goodness, what? Knowledge. Knowledge. You must know. This world belongs to those who know. If you don't know, you will be manipulated by those who knows. At work, they are manipulating you because they know. You know, I was looking at my salary. They are rubric that I don't understand. I just see rubric, rubric. I came to those, I went to that financial guy. I said, ah, ah, Papa, you put things here that I don't understand. I don't know where my money is going. I'll just see I made this money, but when they will come in so little, they say, they remove this, they remove this, they remove this, because you don't know. Now I'm making pressure on them. Even if I don't know it very much yet, but I'm making them the impression that I know. I'm making pressure that I know this. I know this. So now they cannot just manipulate me anyhow. Yeah. People are manipulating you because you don't know. Mm -hmm. See, if you go and get a, um, any service like a, a insurance or whatever, when you go there, what do you do these people? They'll write small things like this. You can see. Long like this. This guy will just gonna tell you sign here. You sign. Sign here. You sign. Wait until you have problem for them to repair your car. Then they'll bring the very same paper. Now they make you read that place. Yet in this one. Then you ask them, why did you not tell me? No, it was here. You sign. But you did not read. It was their aim. To make you not know. Have you ever been like that? That you become very angry and then they show you an article. They show you a line of things that you did not read very well. He must ask me. You become very angry. They say, sir, if you continue like this, we'll call the police because you signed. You are, you, are, you are caught. You must learn. There are new technology. There are new things that you must learn. Learn what, what you're doing. Even if it's a simple thing, learn it. Master it. You know, there's something that I like with white people. Whatever they are doing, most of them, not all of them, most of them, when they are doing something, they will master what they're doing. If it's a guy who changed tires, if you go to the white person, he will tell you about the tire, about the pressure. About, but us, what we do? No, it's always must just to do bar, two bars, two bars. Why two bars? No, Papa. They always put two bars in this car. Why two bars in this car? Hear me, will tell you they put two bars here because. You see, the because makes the difference. Yeah. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Am I opening your mind? Yes. Even if you're making shoes, go learn how to make new shoes. Go learn the new design. You are a tailor. Don't just make us. Nowadays, people, they like some stuff. Learn how to do the stuff. With you, the Bible says you must add what? Knowledge. You must pursue knowledge. You must know. You must be on the page. You are a doctor. Your knowledge are the knowledge of uh, 10 years ago. Of course, they're not going to give you that post because there are people who have more insight than you. People who have more intelligence than you. People who know better things than you. Hello? Yes. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, it, what you do doesn't matter. But you must have knowledge on what you do to make it valuable. If you are doing, uh, uh, how do you call it? Yeah. There are new things that they are doing. 
There are those you used to do, you put here to remove it, you must have a hammer to remove them. But now there are new things that you can remove easily. Learn those things. Go learn because they exist. Google them, learn them, go to school, add knowledge so that when people come to you, they don't take time. When him is taking a hammer to remove one nail, you, you remove quickly, you can have five clients. <laughs> Am I making sense to somebody? Yes. If we don't tell you those, those things in here in the church, you think that Pagan will tell you? They won't. Because they know if you know, you will take over. Yeah. That's what the Spirit of the Lord is revealing us those things. If you are a mechanic, learn the mechanic. Go learn how to get new, new things to do the diagnosis of the car. Yeah. Be the best. Listen, in everything you do, be the best. Yeah. In everything you do, be the best. In everything you do, be the best. Let people look for you. Is that doctor not here? Which doctor? Now that doctor yeah. is a bit short, dark, wearing glasses. I want that doctor. Why? Because you do your things perfectly. Then they're going to look for you. And when they're looking for you too much, your boss will look, oh, they're looking for you. No, this guy is inside. Let me promote. If you are getting less than a million, you reach a million. Yes. Am I making sense to somebody? Yes. Are you going to learn now? Yes. Are you going to go back to school? Yes. You know, there's, a, there's a, a lady recently who is just amazing me. She is over... Uh, 62 years, she's more than 62 years, but she is doing a master, master, master degree. You and me, they don't study. To study even a thing like this is a problem. Study, my brother, if you want to make it. What, what, which number are we now? Seven. seven. Number seven. Now seven key, the seventh key is Listen to others. Get advice from others. There are things that you are struggling with. There are people who did those things before you. Look, at, look for them. Get advice from them. Ask them what they did to, to succeed. Don't be an, an inventor of light when the Edison did invent light already. Just use what Edison did. Go learn what Edison did. Ask Edison, what did you do? Hallelujah. Sometimes you are failing because you don't receive advice. Listen to what the Bible says in the book of Proverbs 24, verse 6. Proverbs 24, 6. I need to finish this. 24, 6. And then 11, verse 14. Proverbs 24, verse 6. And Proverbs 11, verse 14. The Bible says, read with me. Surely you need guidance to wage war. And victory, where is victory? Victory is won through many advisors. There are people who learn before, before you. There are people who went through what you're going through now. Do not be these people who knows everything. You don't know everything. You don't know. You don't know. When they ask you, I know, I know. You don't know. You must be humble enough to listen to people that didn't before you. When you go somewhere, learn from people who have been there. Many of us were failing because knowledge is around there. But you want to try ourselves. And then you get burned. And then, ah, why did you not tell me? And then they will tell you, you did not ask. I've seen people getting burned. And then they start complaining. People are bad here. They don't like people. But did you ask when you arrive? You wanted to show that you know. Listen, even if you know a, a free advice, when you go somewhere, and even if you, you know, always allow those who have been there before to do it first so that you can learn some trick and bring something new. Yeah. Are you getting me? Yeah. Allow them to show you. The Bible said that victory is won through many advisors. You don't ask. You don't ask those who have been there before you. You don't ask your parent, Papa, what did you do? Go to Papa Bishop, ask him, what did you do to remain with your own one, only one wife for more than 30 years? He will tell you. Don't just say, I know, I know. I know you don't know. You don't know because you've never been there before. He has been there before. You've never been 30 years in marriage, you're only two. And then I know, I know, I'll, I'll make more than him. Huh? 
Be humble. Go ask Papa, what did you do? Maybe you're always already on a bed, a very bad track. Yeah. Your problem you don't ask. You think that you know everything. I'm a child of God. I know the Spirit of God will learn, teach me everything. The Spirit of God will teach you things through other people. Yes. <laughs> For lack of guidance, a nation falls. This is what is happening with you. You are failing because there's no guidance. Key to success, allow people to guide you. Allow those who know to guide you. But victory is won through many advice. Because of time, you need to learn to go to other people. People don't come to see their pastor to ask for advice. They only come when there is trouble. Then I ask you, but you left this place, you go to that place without asking me. Now that you're in trouble, I must not sleep because of you. You know, sometimes you guys are unfair. <laughs> when you started, you did not involve me. When it is sour, now I can't sleep. Pastor, Pastor, God, Pastor, do, pray, do. I will pray, yes. But if you could have asked advice before, we could have asked God to guide us. We could have asked those who know to guide us. Don't go buy cars just yourself and then you just see you with a car here. Go and ask for advice. You get a salary of 20,000 and then you buy a car of 15,000. Why can't you come and advise? So that you can advise you know it's too much. Start with a small one. And then after that, God will promote you. We'll get another one. Now that you can't pay that very same car. Pastor, pastor. Pastor what now? Now, which one? Eight. We are doing well. We are finishing. Never quit. Never quit. Never quit attitude. Do not quit. Do not quit. Do not quit. Listen, do not quit. No matter how painful it is, no matter how impossible it seems to be, do not quit. You must have the attitude, I will not going to quit. <laughs> Listen to this. Do not fail without trying. <laughs> Many of us were failing without even trying. We are failing by eyes. They just, ah, eh, ah, ah, no, I can't be. I can't. I can't. If brother, try, hey, I can't. Ah, no. Go and do it. Because those who are doing it, they have two eyes like you. I told you, I was so afraid to study because my English is complicated. But I was like, hey, I must go study. I'm not going to quit. I went to the varsity, enrolled myself, and I started studying pattern. My brother, sometimes I recognize when I will explain my things in the paper, the, the lecturer does not understand because my English is complicated. That's what, what are you trying to say? But I did not quit. And I like one of my lecturers. God bless that man. He told me, I know you are not a French-speaking man, you know, it's not your, your, your first language. But I can see that you have something in you. I'm going to help you. Don't quit. Papa, I was so surprised. Those who were born in English, swim in English, jump in English, I saw them failing. Me, who came? I passed them. Others up to today, they did not finish that course. But I finished it. I got it. I have it. I have that degree in my pocket. You can come and see it. I have it. I have it. My wife has a master. I have a public health. She got it. English is not the first language, but you, you always say, hey, I'm not going to make it. Why are you failing without trying? Why are you failing without? Mathematics, mathematics, ma mathematics what? Mathematics was created by human being. You have the spirit that created that human being. You can master that mathematics. Amen. Physics, physics, master it. Am I talking to somebody? Amen. Wake up the brother next to you is sleeping because he can't, can't go away from this kind of thing. You can do it. You can do it. Physics. You can, do it. Amen. can somebody say I can do it? Amen. No, say it again, I can do it. Amen. No, say it again, I can do it. Amen. You can do it, my brother. The problem, the limitation is in you. Remove those limitations. Hallelujah. 
Do not quit even when it is difficult. Do not fail without trying. Do not fail. Who told you that you're going to fail? Who is telling you that? Who told you that you're going to fail? Who? You haven't tried yet. Have you, ever, have you never done something when you said to like, oh, I thought it's difficult, but I'm making it. Oh, I'm making it. Come with me in the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Romans 8, 37. Let me tell you your nature. Let me show you your nature. Maybe you didn't know. Let me show you your nature. Romans chapter 8, verse 37. 37. No, in all these things, in all this, you see the things we're talking about this morning. The Bible says, in all these things. Who are we? We are more than conqueror. You are winner by nature. You are not trying to win. It is your nature. Your nature is the nature of a winner, not a quitter. You, by nature, you are a winner. You are not a quitter. So you should not quit. Don't give up in the middle. Nobody should say, Pastor, I couldn't make it. It's too difficult. No. It's impossible for it to be too difficult because by nature, you are a winner. Are you getting me? Do not quit. I know sometimes it can be difficult. Sometimes it can be tough. Sometimes you, you don't see the horizon, but don't give up. Because the winner, it is your nature. It is by nature that you, that you are a winner. It's not by effort. It is in you. Just go and look for that potential. It is already in you. And win. If you want to make it to become successful, don't quit. Don't quit doing what you're doing. Continue to do. If you're not working, go study. Why is not working? Do it better. It will work. Hallelujah. Amen. The last one. The last one. Do not be afraid of risk. Risks. Do not be afraid of risks. Listen, beloved. Life by itself, it's very risky. <laughs> you see, life by itself, it's Risky. But you cannot say that I'm not going to go because it's too risky. Hey, it's too risky. People, they don't know. You will not going to succeed if you are always afraid of the risk. All you need to do, mitigate the risk. Reduce the risk. You can't be afraid that the, what if they hit me in the car, with the car? What if I fell? What if this happened? What if I fell? No. Life is risky by itself. When you got born from your mother's womb, it was risky, you could have died. But you succeed to go out. It was risky, your mother could have aborted you. You succeeded. There are people that are trying to abort them. They try to do kiretage, but when the doctor was introducing, you avoid those things, you succeeded. Life is risky, but it's worth it to be lived. Hello? Amen. Don't be afraid of risk all the time. Don't be afraid of what if this happened. What if uh, I have an accident? What if I cut my finger? What if uh, nothing is said that you'll cut your finger? Go. Do. Read with me Proverbs chapter 22 verse 13. Look at what the sluggard does. The Bible says that. The sluggard says there is a lion outside. I will be killed in the public square. I mean, come on. So that lion will leave everybody else just come to kill you. Before you to come, the lion was there. Why is not eating other people? Only you. Beloved, life is risky. You must take risk. Take risk to put that money somewhere. If you don't put that money somewhere, if you don't put that money to produce because you're afraid, what if they eat my money? What if they eat my money? If you keep it in your, in your room, it is not going to produce. You have to risk. Because those who put their money there before, there are people who are millionaires today. You, you are always afraid. What if? What if? What if? 
Listen, if is the key of the imaginary world. If is the key of the imaginary world. If you live in the if, you live in the imaginary world. And you will not live in the imaginary, you live in the F. You'll have things in the imagination, it's not gonna come. Remove the if. Kill the if in your life. What if? What if? What if? Let God do this business. Hey, what if it doesn't work? But what if it works? Why you always think negative in your life? Let invest this money. Oh, what if it doesn't work? Yeah, well, you are right. But what if it works? So it's 50 50. Let God do that business. Let do this. What if? Let do this. What if? Stop living that life. It is time for you to understand that uh, risk is everyone. Stop being a sluggard who we'll always be afraid of an imaginary lion. Lion is not on the streets, lion is in the forest, it is in the savant. Don't be a sluggard and say, no, what if the lion? No, if is a key of the imaginary world. Do it. If it doesn't work, at least I did it. I tried. There are people who are living constantly in this guiltiness of, hey, I wish that I had tried. I wish when people were investing, I invested. Now they are so far. You know, beloved, I went through that thing. I'm like, Ish, what makes me not invest by that time? People are far. Now you're asking how you're going to. It is because you did not take the risk. There is no risk zero. Unless you become a cadaver. But even the cadaver have the risk to decay. So everywhere there is risk. There is no place without risk. There will always be risk. But the good thing with you as a child of God, you have God's backup. You have God's backup. It is time for you to risk it. Risk to do that business. Risk to do that school. Risk to go that place. Risk to do that investment. Invest. What if it works? Why always thinking about the negative? Put that money into that investment. You are a child of God. Pray for it. If God say go, go. Because God knows. He will make you succeed. We want you to succeed. We want you to become a successful man. We don't succeed by accident. We succeed by plan. We succeed by plan. You don't succeed by accident. You don't succeed by accident. You need to plan your success. Hey. Your success need to be planned. And keys have been given to you. Rise up on your feet. You have the keys now. You can succeed. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, amen. Amen. Hallelujah, amen. Success need to be prepared. It doesn't come by accident. Yes, you have faith. You have been having that faith. But there is one leg that was lacking for you to be complete. And that leg has been given to you this morning. You have the keys now. Change things in your life. Use those keys and unlock your destiny. Unlock your life. Unlock your success. 
demons have nothing to do with this business. You have been chasing them, casting them, binding them. But they are somewhere there. They are saying, but we have nothing to do with your business. It is you who doesn't work hard. It is you who is always afraid to try. It is you who doesn't have any goals. Now start praying God. Tell him, Lord, come and help me. Tell him, Lord, help me to set up clear goals for my life. Help me to set up clear goals. You don't even know if you succeeded or not. Because you have no goals. You are not having something you are working on. Something you have been looking on. Speak to God now. To give you goals of your life. Of your life. In the name of Jesus. I command the spirit of fear. That have been tormenting you to leave you right now. In the name of Jesus. Let fear leave you in the name of Jesus. Fear to try. Fear to fail. I command that fear to go in the name of Jesus. Be free right now. So that you may do it. I declare that you are a winner. You are a maker. You are not a quitter. You will make it. You will make it. In the name of Jesus. Now let's pray together. Say after me, Lord Jesus. I have, your I have your nature. You knew your goals. You knew your goals. Open, my eyes Open my eyes to set up my goals. Up my goals. Clear, goals. Clear goals in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Give, me Give me the strength to work hard to, work hard. to reach my goals. Reach my goals. Help, me Help me to be consistent. Help me, Help me to get all the necessary knowledge, the necessary knowledge. To, reach to reach my goals. Help me, Help me. to not be afraid, be afraid. Knowing, knowing that you have my back. Have my back. By, nature, By nature, I am a winner, am a winner. not a quitter. Not a Therefore, Therefore, I declare I am a successful Christian. I am a successful person. I am a successful being. From today, I am succeeding. I declare it and I decree it in Jesus' mighty name. Do you believe that you're a successful man? Give Jesus a round of applause.